We've been talking about things that uh, keep us away from Jesus in the form of stuffing, because it is, after all, Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving, number one for me, is all about the stuffing. I love stuffing. And we even have battle in our family because I grew up in the north and my wife grew up in the south, so we have cornbread stuffing and the real stuffing. <laughs> and uh, so we have this, thank you, yes, all those stuffing lovers. There's a lot of cornbread folks here too, I can tell. Um, so last week when we talked about stuffing, we talked about the stuff of our life that gets in the way of Jesus happens to be stuff. The physical stuff. We were men. We talked about uh, the number of belts we had and shoes we had. And, and I think our thrift boutique probably got busy with calls this week from people giving away their stuff because it turns out that when our focus is on that stuff, it's not on Jesus. Well, today, we're going to talk about a different kind of stuff. Relationship stuff. Now, what I need you to do is have everybody turn around and look at the back door. Take a look. And I want you to think of somebody that if they came through that door right now, somebody from your life, if they came through that door right now, you'd go, oh, no. <laughs> Got that person in mind? Yeah, okay. So, so when we, there are those people that we just don't connect with well. Why is that? Why do we feel that way about that person? Somebody give me an answer. Come on, you know you know people. What? They're a jerk. They're a jerk. How do you know they're a jerk? They were mean to you. Yeah, so there's things that happen in our past experience. There's all sorts of things that we happen that we know that they're a jerk because they proved it to us, right? That's exactly how it is. You have personal history with them, or you have personal knowledge about them, or you have an assumption about them. But all of those things and all of those create relationship stuff. And, and today we're going to talk about how that gets in the way of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we come into this space, fire alarms going off and people just jumping up and joining the church. What's going on here? We don't have control. And I praise you for that. I praise you for this morning. I praise you for this evening, and I praise you for this moment here right now. I feel connected, and I think we feel connected. Help us to grasp a hold of what this means today. Help us to absolutely get what it means to have the relationship stuff in the way and how we can let go of that. Lord, inform us in your good way, in your good will. In Jesus we pray these things. Amen. We have problems with people because we have fractured relationships. And that this is not something new. Fra uh, relationship stuff started in the garden. We hear about it in Genesis when Adam and Eve are there. We talked about Adam and Eve last week, and we're talking about them again this week. This is how the relationship stuffing started right here in Scripture. Genesis 3, 8. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve sinned and disconnected themselves from God. And worse, not only did they do that, then they went to hiding. You know, if I, if I just hide... God won't know what we did, kind of thing. And that's the beginning of this relationship stuff. It started with God. It started with us and our break from God. And, and that's where it started. And since that time, relationships have been fractured. And why is this so hard? Why do we have this problem? Well, just like Adam and Eve, it's because of guilt. Guilt is a primary inhibitor of relationship. If you've got guilt in your life, we, we live that way. We know that we're not perfect when we go out the door in the morning. And, and when we let guilt walk out the door with us, gift, uh, guilt rules our day. 
and that guilt is ruling your day, then we start to think that less of ourselves, and, and we start to fear that people will find out what the real Tom Nelson's like, the one guilt-laden. And, and so what we do is we start to create a new look. The way we hide is by our persona. You know what I mean by that? One person does. Good. Should I go back and start again? Do you know what I mean by that persona that we have when we walk out the door? Hi, how are you today? You know, like that person who walked through your door, you probably would still say, Oh, it's so good to have you in church today. Did you ever smile like that so long your face started to hurt? <laughs> That's what we do. Am I alone? No, it's what we do. We create because we don't have this good relationship with people, so we're going to do it this way. And it's crazy because there's none of it that's real. It's not authentic. I don't really like you. It's what we should be saying. And, and, but we don't do that. It's because this guilt in us. And, and so our public self or our mask is what is out there in front. And we're hiding behind it. Just like Adam and Eve were hiding from God, we're hiding from God and from everybody else with this public persona. And what's become even uh, more difficult with this is the onslaught of social media. Social media now lets us do an entirely different persona. We can put pretty flowers around our name or do something cool with an emoji or do all sorts of things and be something special when we're leaving our guilt behind. The only problem is, is that it is becoming our most prevalent form of communication in the world, and it stinks. Social media stinks as a communication device. There's a study that says that 7% um, of our interpersonal communication, what people get from it, 7% of it's verbal. 38% of it's vocal and 55% of it's visual. So if you're texting or you're Facebooking and you put words down, you're giving them 7% of the story. They're not, they're not getting the, 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 the sound inflections of your voice like, oh, so good to see you today. They're not getting that. They're getting, hey, I don't see boys. I can see. Uh, uh, they, they're, sorry, I had one of those moments. <laughs> one of our soccer families is here, and it just kind of wigged me out for a moment. Good to see you. <laughs> we won! <laughs> uh, that, that, so that vocal inflection gets in a way, and then also our appearance when we talk. I'm very expressive. You probably all know that about me, even if you just got here. But that's part of what our communication is. So when we do all these things, when we go to texting or typing, only 7% of what we're saying is getting out there. <laughs> And the worst part is that we even cut shortcut that. You know, all these initial things that we do now, like BTW, by the way, or half of them I have to look up because I might want to be cool like everybody else, and I still don't know what it looks is, so I Google it and look it up. And I've got a new, you know, how many of you have ever typed or ever received an okay and read something into it? Okay. Yeah. You know what? That's a one I use all the time. I use it with my kids only... I've found the shortcut for okay. It's K. <laughs> Do you know how much time I'm saving in my life when I'm pushing that O? <laughs> o. <laughs> saving hours and hours, end on end. But, but the way you send the word okay, and if it's only 7% of our communication, what happens with that okay? People read all sorts of things into it because now they're left to their imagination. And their imagination, like my imagination, is full of guilt in my life, so I presume what they're going to say, think, and when they say, okay, what they meant is, you're a real jerk. Okay? That's, that's what happens with the social media in our lives. And, and so here's my, if you have your notes, this is my equation for today. Communication plus guilt minus relationship equals disaster.
It equals disaster in our lives because none of it is real communication. None of it's real. So, so we have all this going on. So the question is, if all of this relationship stuff is not correct, and by the way, this is the point because I'm starting to spit my stuffs. I apologize to all teachers and especially English teachers for using the word stuff predominantly throughout this sermon. That's my disclaimer. But when we get into that place and we start talking, why do we do it? Why not just go it alone? If relationships are so hard, if we had to put on a fake side, why is it that we end up trying to be in relationship with people? It's simple. It's because that's the way we were created. We were made from the beginning to be in relationship. Anybody ever go on an elevator? What do you say when you get on an elevator? <laughs> 